Hey y'all, what's going on? It's DIY Alex back with another tutorial. And if you guys are um, familiar and followers around here, you know that usually I go live on Tuesdays, but I had a bit of a hectic day yesterday. So I'm here on Wednesday because I still wanna bring you guys these great ideas. I think you're really gonna like them, um, but I wanted to do it on Wednesday instead. So here we are. I figured it'll take a few minutes for notifications to go out. So we'll let that happen while we chat and say hello, um, because it always takes us a few minutes to jump into things anyways. So hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here. And if you can hear me okay and see me okay, I'd love it if you'd let me know in the comments below. Um, that way I can make sure my connection is good before we jump into all the things. Hi Dee, welcome. Hey Renee, I'm glad you're here. I am feeling a lot better today. <laughs> Still really tired, um, which is why you are getting the fresh face, fresh face of DIY Alex. No makeup or anything like that. I just decided we were gonna do this thing and I didn't really have the extra energy for makeup. I'd rather use it on these crafts. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today. Hi Stephanie, welcome, welcome. Hi Dee, I think I already said hello to you. We'll wait for a few others to join us and we will jump into this. I'm really excited about Father's Day gifts. If you've been in my Facebook group, you probably know that because I've been posting a bunch about it recently. I have been seeing so many different things that just really inspired me to want to talk about this because the things I was noticing are just like, honestly, guys, you know, I like to keep it real around here. I just noticed that a lot of the Father's Day gifts that I have seen, like not DIY gifts, but the things you're able to purchase are just really lame for Father's Day. Like no offense if anyone was gonna get their dad this, so I'm sorry if this hurts your feelings, but things like keychains and mugs and tumblers and things that, those are not inherently bad things, but they really don't have any creativity. So I've been racking my brain for a few days on some good ideas I can give you guys that are either DIYable or I also put together a list of things on Amazon that I thought were really good ideas as well. And the list is pretty small. I think it only has like 10 items on it. Most of them are $50 or less. And they are things that either I have actually given to the guys in my life or just ideas that I thought were really good. Um, things that I thought dads would actually want, they'd actually use and enjoy. Um, and I'm gonna give you some DIY ideas that I think are gonna help give you some inspiration also, um, because in case you haven't noticed or you haven't realized, um, Father's Day this year is June 18th, 2023. So we are coming up within like the next couple of weeks. So if you're gonna order something, you wanna make sure you're doing that or start getting your ideas together so that you have a plan. So that's what I'm here to help you do today. Hey, hey, welcome. Good, I'm glad you can hear me. Good, hi Darnell, hi Tania, hi Stephanie, hi Charlene, welcome. Hey Roseanne and happy birthday Roseanne. I saw on Facebook it was your birthday. So I hope that you're having a really great day. Hi Deborah. welcome, welcome, hi Jeanette. Oh, thanks, Dee. You guys are sweet. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here. You know, Renee, our um, weather has cleared up a lot, actually. It's totally dry outside now, but it rained all morning. It was just a very dreary morning, so I definitely took it slow this morning. I actually slept in a little bit because um, we don't want to go too deep into it, but I ended up making an unplanned trip to the hospital yesterday morning just to check on baby boy, make sure everything was okay, and thank God it is. Praise God for that. He's totally fine, um, but it just really, really wore me out, and I just realized the last few days I've started to enter the phase of my pregnancy where I can't sleep very well, so I haven't slept well and probably, except for last night, probably like three or four days. Um, so I was super tired and I slept in today and it felt really, really good. I'm still tired, but I'm hoping that if I can just sleep in for a couple days um, and not get up super early, that maybe I can catch up on my sleep because it's a little early for me to already be this tired. <laughs> Hi, Roseanne. Hello, hello. Or sorry, not Roseanne. I just saw your name in the comments. Wishing you a happy birthday, but hi, Kristen. And those of you who have joined us, Good, good. Oh, Renee said you have smoke from the Canadian bonfires. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope everybody's okay. Yeah, you know what, Renee? I did see a photo of that and I didn't know what it was. Somebody had said their air quality was really bad. Um, and I'm sure it's probably in the same region as you, but I didn't really, I didn't realize it was because of the wildfire smoke. 
<laughs> Thanks, Charlene. Yep, he's doing great. Um, I have an anterior placenta, so the placenta is growing in front of baby. So I do have trouble feeling him a lot. Um, but a couple weeks ago, he was super active and like super strong, punching me, kicking me like crazy. And then over the last couple weeks, it had just kind of trickled off into just being very, very subtle. So it was something I was worried about for a couple days before it actually went. Um, but finally, night before last, I just wasn't able to sleep. I was like, we just need to go in and get some monitoring done. And we did, and he did great. He actually had the hiccups <laughs> when we got there, um, and he was moving all over the place. So everybody's good, which is obviously the most important thing. But I still have these really good ideas, and I was like, man, I really still want to do this live because I'm really excited about it. So that's what we're here to do. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to send you guys overhead, and we're going to talk. Well, actually, let me think about how I'm going to do this. Let me think about how I'm going to do this because I want to make sure it's good and organized. Oh, wow, Renee. Your air is the worst, worst quality in the world. That is awful. Well, I hope everyone's okay. Yes, goodness. Please stay indoors. Um, oh, yeah, you know what? Because I, um, I think Amy makes that. May live in your region, Renee, because I saw her photo. And that's the one that I was like, oh, I wonder what's going on there. But I didn't know what that was. Um, I think she lives in New York, maybe, or New Jersey, something like that. Um, so that may be, you know, the same thing that you're dealing with. Hey, Ashley, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. So we're just jumping into some DIY gift ideas that dad will actually want. Um, because as I was telling you guys before, as I was searching either for files for DIY gift ideas or pre-made gift ideas for those of us who don't have time to DIY a gift this year, I just was really blown away by how like uninspired a lot of the gifts were for dad. Hey, Delonda, I'm so glad that you're here. Everyone say hey to Delonda. It's been a while since I chatted with her. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Diane. I really, really appreciate that. Um, but anyway, so a lot of the gifts that I saw were just really uninspired, I felt like. I think that's a good word for it. So I did a couple of things. One, I did set up an Amazon list on my storefront, which I have linked in the description of this video if you want to check it out. And that's for those of us who either don't feel like DIYing a gift this year or just simply don't have time. Because listen, I totally respect it, though I'm a huge advocate of DIY gifts. I know sometimes we just don't have the capacity for that. So if you want to buy your gift rather than make it, you can check out that Amazon list in the description of this video. But if you do want to DIY a gift, I'm going to show you how to make one today. And then we're going to discuss a couple of other ideas. I have some video support for them, um, not for all of them, but for a lot of them so that you can see how to make them if you don't know already. So we'll talk about those as I am prepping my um, craft here because I have a lot of different things I have to prep. So we can talk through those things as we go. So let's go ahead and go overhead and um, I'll show you what we're working with today. And in fact, let me see if I can get this to cooperate and be the way that I want it to look. Perfect. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to be showing you how to make are these customized socks from Silky Socks. And we're going to be doing this two different ways. I have a sublimation print that I printed off for these red socks. But then I also used some infusible ink. And I cut out a few different designs that I found in Cricut Design Space. I know this sheet looks brown because that's just kind of the nature of infusible ink, but this is actually black infusible ink. And I wanted to use black because I'm either going to sublimate one or two pairs of socks with these designs. I haven't decided which one I want to do yet. Um, but yeah, and I just realized you guys, I only cut out, <laughs> I only cut out half of what I needed because I need, I need two designs, but I need two for each sock. <laughs> So we might be cutting another sheet of infusible ink while we're on this live because my brain is um, feeling a little bit like the consistency of scrambled eggs at this point. <laughs> so let's choose our designs and then I can recut out some more or I can cut out enough so we can do both. Oh, Ashley, I would love for Penguin to make an appearance. That is my cat, but he will absolutely refuse. He does not allow me to pick him up and he does not like to be carried. So even if I did go pick him up and bring him in here, he would just run away before we got here. So 
<laughs> I would love to if that was his thing. But he's just super, super shy and just not a fan. So I just like to let him live his life and uh, do his thing. So anyways, so the socks that we're going to be working with are the athletic socks from Silky Socks. So in case you guys are new to these socks, I really, really like working with them because they have a cotton foot. So down here at the bottom is the foot um, and it's 90% cotton and 10% polyester. So it does have a little bit of moisture wicking ability, but it makes it nice and comfortable. But then the top of the sock, the white area is like 95% polyester and I think like 5% spandex. And um, they make lots of different kinds of socks. So you can check those out. I linked them for you in the description of the video. Um, I really like the athletic socks, but they also make like no-show socks. They make dress socks. So if you wanted to make like some custom wedding socks or for something that's a special occasion, you could use those for that. They have a huge variety of blanks. So I definitely recommend you check those products out because they are super fun. So I already added some inserts into these socks, but I'm gonna show you how I do that on these other pairs because I wanted you guys to see the process. These inserts for the socks are sold separately, um, but I do recommend that you get a set or two. Now you can see with these, I have used them a bunch of times. So there is some leftover ink at the top and that's perfectly okay. You're totally good to keep reusing them. So I would say, you know, you wanna get a couple of sets, but you don't need to have a fresh set every time that you use them. And basically what this does is it just keeps the socks stabilized so that you can get a really good print, whether you're doing sublimation or infusible ink. But because these socks are so stretchy, I do not recommend that you do HTV on these socks. I recommend you either use infusible ink with your Cricut machine or sublimation. I don't recommend HTV on these socks just because they're gonna have a lot of stretch and that's gonna cause the HTV to look really, really weird when the sock is actually worn. But in case you guys didn't notice that, when I was pulling this apart, something else I like about these socks is that there's like colored stripes in between the white. So it makes the design look really cool even when somebody is actually wearing the socks and they are stretched out, but they also look really great when nobody is wearing them and they're just flat like this. So I think they make a really awesome gift and that's what we're actually going to be working with today. So I'm excited. Um, oh, that's a good question, Ashley. She said, did you make your own inserts for the socks? That would be a really good idea. Um, you could probably buy a pair and then trace them maybe and then use another material like a craft board to make your own inserts. Um, but I got these with the socks. So totally up to you the way that they do that. D said, so glad you are sublimating socks. They are underrated. I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Yeah, my cat is definitely a stinker. He absolutely does whatever he wants and does not let me tell them um, what to do otherwise. <laughs> he just does his own thing. So that's fun. To, it can be really fun, but also it can be really, um, not really annoying because Cats don't really, I don't know. My cat doesn't bother me, but sometimes it can be really funny and frustrating when I need him to actually do something. For example, when I have to take him somewhere when he's going to be babysat by my mom, um, getting him into his carrier is like a military operation. It typically takes two people and it's like a whole thing. <laughs> Let's see, Kristen said, could you cover the forms with butcher paper to keep the extra ink off? You know, Kristen, you probably could, but honestly, since this is gonna be the inside of the sock, I'm not really worried about any of this. And honestly, most of the socks stop at about the same place. So I don't know how well you can see that, but the line on there is pretty defined and it's just barely going to touch anyways. So I'm not worried about a little bit of residual ink getting on the inside of my insert. But yeah, you probably could add some if you wanted to. Another thing to note that's cool about these socks is that if you get a little bit of ink below the line of the sock onto the colored section, since this area is cotton, it is going to wash out. So you can like put tape all the way across this area if that's really important to you. But generally speaking, it's not really gonna matter because it's gonna wash out the first time you wash them anyway, since it's like 90% cotton. So it's totally up to you how much you want to get that right, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, 
So now I want to show you guys how to add the insert onto. Actually, let me think about this real quick. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space because this cut does take a while because I made three different designs and I did two a piece. So this one, I know it's backwards for you because remember, you always want to mirror your infusible ink. This says dad, the man, the myth, the legend. This one says dad, and then you can actually change the text down here. So this one says established 2023. Since my husband's going to be a dad for the first time this year, I left it with the current year. And then the third one is just dad with some tools cut out of the center of the D's. So I got three different designs and I did two each, which would be for each sock. But there are two socks in every set, not one. <laughs> So my brain shorted out a little bit there, but that'll give us a good opportunity for me to show you how to um, cut more infusible ink because I went ahead and did it on my own this time so that you guys didn't have to wait a super long time, but it looks like you're going to learn either way. <laughs> so let me grab a cutting mat here and we will get started. My cutting mat's a little dirty. Don't laugh too hard. And my Cricut's under the table. So we're going to be getting under the table on this live. But hey, that's okay. Let's see if I can add my laptop so I can show you guys how I'm going to do this. Hang on just a second. I don't do this that often. So let's see if we can figure it out. <laughs> okay, so while I'm opening that, Do this. Okay. I see. So let's try add source. This one. And I'll type it in here. Otherwise, I may just have to, whoops. Goodness, I'm typing on the wrong keyboard. Um, I may just have to talk you guys through it, but since we're taking this opportunity to learn anyways, I might as well just show you what to do, right? Okay, let's see if this works. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my desktop screen and I'll show you how I'm going to um, cut this infusible ink. So um, I have my Explore selected here in my drop down menu, and I'm going to go to my stuff to find my saved projects. And the last thing that I worked on was this Father's Day sock project. So that makes it really easy. And we'll go ahead and um, we'll just go ahead and click on make it because I don't need to make any adjustments to any of my designs. So I designed each of these at three inches wide because that seemed to be about right for each side of my socks. So I'll click on make it, which will take us directly to the prepare screen. We're going to select on a mat for infusible ink transfer sheets and then click confirm. And then when we see everything here, we can see it's all kind of jumbled up. So I do want to spread these out a little bit just because infusible ink can be a little tricky to weed. So I don't like for mine to be super close together. I just find it's a little easier when I have a little bit more space. So maybe what I'll do is I'll flip flop these two and make it like this. And this way we can fit everything within about six inches of my infusible ink sheet. So that will leave me another six inches down below to use on the rest of my sheet. I wonder if we could make this a little shorter. There, it's gotten it a little bit close on that, but well, <laughs> see if we can get these a little closer together and then maybe, yeah, that doesn't really make much of a difference, does it? That's okay. We'll call that good enough. Everything's spread out, um, so it should be really easy to cut apart. Another thing you always want to do when you work with infusible ink is check that mirror button. So just like HTV, we're going to mirror it um, because we're going to be putting the ink side down on the blank, which is why we always mirror. So then we'll click on continue. And once my air two connects, 
we will be able to select our material. So I'm gonna go, I have my Explore Air 2 set to custom. So then I'm gonna click browse all materials and select, or excuse me, search infusible ink. And I'm gonna select infusible ink transfer sheet. I'm actually gonna save that because I cut that fairly often. And then click on done. And then we're gonna go back over to our overhead screen now because we're gonna get everything ready to go on our mat. And like I said, my mat's pretty dirty, so <laughs> that's just real life for you. It worked out really well with this sheet because I was able to use like a sheet of scrap that I just had laying around, but I think my other sheet is just a full sheet. So whenever you store your infusible ink, you do wanna save it and leave it in these black sleeves because infusible ink is sensitive to light. So if you can help it, you wanna to try to keep it from not getting a ton of light onto it. Then when you put it onto your cutting mat, I always like to use a green standard grip cutting mat. You're gonna put it with the transfer sheet, which is the shiny side in this case, facing down and the ink side facing up. Whoops, sorry about that. Gets a little curly there. It's a little bit like working with curly cardstock, so it can be a little bit challenging. Um, I wouldn't say that it's hard, it's just the material doesn't really wanna flatten. So it can be a little bit rebellious. Okay. So once we have this here, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in my Explore Air 2. Give me just a hot second, cause it's literally under the table. <laughs> and I'll get that started cutting while we continue working on our socks. Okay, so now, well, that's working, we'll go ahead and go back to the view that we had before. And we'll keep working on our project while this continues. I was just checking the comments to make sure I didn't miss a whole lot. Oh, that's a good idea, Kristen. She said, I always mirror first and then rearrange. That makes total sense. Oops, sorry. Hold on, I'm still here. I just messed up my views here on my software. There we go. All right. So like I said, well, that's cutting. We'll go ahead and get these socks all set up for infusible ink. So now I wanna show you guys how, the, the best way that I found at least, to add your socks onto your inserts because it can be a little bit tricky to get that done. And it's not very flattering, okay? It's not pretty. <laughs> but the best way that I have found to do it is to take the insert and tuck it underneath my chin. And then I grab my sock and I bunch it up like this. I put it up into this bump, like right here. And then I drop it. And then I can adjust my sock like this. And now I'm gonna send you back overhead because I wanna show you how I adjust the sock to make sure it looks nice and neat. So because we're gonna be putting the design just at the top, it's not quite as important on this insert, but I do like to have my lines nice and straight the way that they are with this red pair. See how it just looks nice and neat and even? I think it's worth it to take the time to do that so that if you're doing an all over print, it's gonna look nice and organized and the lines aren't gonna look all weird and crooked. So while it's on the cardboard, I just like to move it around kind of like this. And I just try to get these lines as straight as I can. They don't have to be perfect, but like see how this one starts here and then it wraps around the back. That's definitely gonna make my pattern look kind of funky if I were to sublimate an all over pattern. So I just like to straighten it out and even it up as much as I can. And then this is gonna be the front of the sock. The um, area in the back obviously is where the heel goes. So I'm gonna tuck it in a little bit like this. 
And then when I actually go to put it in my heat press, I will, um, I will actually stick my like white part of the sock into the heat press and I'll have this part sticking out so that the heel isn't going to mess up our pressure at all. So that's the best way that I have found to add the inserts onto the socks. And I've gotten pretty quick at it as I've sublimated lots more pairs. This used to take me several minutes to get it all like figured out. Um, but now that I've done it several times, I'm pretty, pretty handy at it. And especially because these infusible ink designs are just going to go at the top of the sock. Like I said, we don't need to like be super picky. We just want it to look decent. So there's my other green sock. And then I'll go ahead and do the blue pair. Just since we cut more, I'll go ahead and do another pair. Ale uh, D said, Alex, do you pull them tightly or leave them slightly loose? So you want the top to be tight, but you can leave the foot part loose because the foot part is not really gonna get any attention from the heat press. Cause like I said, we're gonna leave that part outside the press. So it's mainly important that you adjust the top and get the top where it needs to go. And of course you can do this using an easy press as well. I just decided to use my heat press because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. And actually on that note, I'm gonna take a second and go over to my heat press and turn it on and let it be heating up um, for sublimation because it takes a couple minutes. All right, one more sock to go and then we will get prepping. Okay, so I told you guys we would talk about the other DIY gift ideas while I was prepping these socks, and I don't wanna to forget to do that. So obviously, the top idea that I have for you is sublimating a sock for your like custom socks for the dad in your life or grandpa or whoever you are making a gift for for Father's Day. I think in general, it's honestly just a really good gift overall. Um, because you can make it literally into anything. You can do dad's favorite sports team, dad's favorite beer, dad's favorite food, like literally anything. I actually will tell you guys a funny story. Um, Ashley will remember this. So for Christmas this year, I got Andrew tickets to one of his favorite comedians, but I didn't know really how to wrap the tickets up. <laughs> so one of the things that I did is I cut the comedian's face out on Canva and I made a pair of socks that had his face all over them. And he laughed so hard when he pulled those out of the box. So literally you can apply these types of gifts to pretty much any occasion. Hey Irma, welcome, welcome. Kristen said, could you arrange the socks so the designs would be on the sides of the sock? Absolutely, Kristen. It just depends on how you put it on the insert. So you could um, kind of bunch the sock up a different way and then stick it on the sides instead. In fact, let's do that on one of these because I think that would actually look a little bit better than just the front of the sock. That's a good idea. So let's take off these green ones and we'll do that instead. So to do that, I'm still gonna stick the sock underneath my chin, but instead of bunching up front to back, I'm gonna leave my sock here on the side I'm gonna bunch up like this. And then I'll have to coax that heel over the side. But we should be able to just wiggle this right on up. So yeah, that way we can leave the side of the sock nice and flat here on the insert because we don't wanna influence our pressure at all. But yeah, that's a great idea, Kristen. I'm glad you said something because I was thinking about that earlier about how I always do it front to back because my favorite types of patterns or designs to put on these socks are the seamless patterns like I have here. I like to make an all over print um, on my socks because I think it looks really cool. But it's fun to have like, it's fun to be creative and do these in different ways. So it's fun to experiment too. All right, so we'll stick this one kind of on the side and coax our sock over it. 
and pull it up like this. And honestly, putting the socks on inserts is probably the longest part of this process because otherwise it's super, super easy to do. Now, if you didn't have the inserts, that I think would make it a lot more challenging and that's why I recommend them so much. I realize it adds a little bit of a cost to your blank. I think a set of inserts is like $5 or something like that. But since they're reusable, I think that they're totally worth making your life easier. And holding your sock nice and stable so you can get a good print. Perfect, okay. So now that we are still letting our socks or our reusable ink finish cutting, let's go ahead and prep our socks for the um, design on the on this set. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I like to typically put my socks like this side by side. Depending on the pattern, you can either put them side by side like this, because this is just an eight and a half by 11 um, print. So you can put them side by side like this, or if you wanted to run the other direction, you can kind of fold them in. And actually, I don't know that you could get them side by side like that. You might have to print one page per piece. But I want my pattern, well, I think I want my pattern like this. <laughs> I think I want it to go top to bottom, right? Yeah, I think that would look better. I think that would look better. So you have some options in the way that you can do it. And I did go ahead and print two of these. I also have this file linked in the description for you guys if you like it. It's just like a distressed stars and stripes one. I didn't wanna do anything that was like too customized for dad because as much as we like things that say things like dad or mom on them, when you're thinking about Father's Day, obviously you want your dad to use it all year long, right? So um, I didn't worry about adding any text here, but you could add text if you did something like go into Canva and add that in. If you wanted to like put some text in the middle and then maybe do a little bit of an offset around it, you could totally do that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half so that I can run my pattern that direction. Yeah, you think top to bottom too? Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think this is gonna be cool, Charlene. I liked the way this looked. I originally had the blue socks for this design, but I think that the reds are gonna match closer than the blue. So that's why I went ahead and switched it to the red socks. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm just gonna fold my design in half here and cut it in half. But I'm only going to um, tape on one side of the sock and then the other, or excuse me, <laughs> let me make that make sense. I'm only gonna tape on one side of the print and then the other. I'm not gonna tape both sides at once just because I don't wanna get too much heat on my designs. I don't think that that would be as helpful for sublimation. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna do the front side of this sock first. So let me move this so you guys can see because I realize my face is in your way. And I thought this pattern was cool because it had a little bit of distressing to it. I thought that made it look a little more guyish. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe I'll start. <laughs> Maybe I'll kind of aim to start my design at the top of my sock, just over top of this blue stripe. That way it's not hitting right above that red stripe. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna try to put my sock in this white area right here. And that's where I want the pattern to start so that it looks really good. And that'll give me a marker for, to help me make it even on all the socks. We'll try to make sure that's nice and straight. I'll kind of, in order to do that, I'm just gonna line this up on my self-healing mat and make sure that that looks good. 
Then I'm gonna go ahead and hold this down and I'm gonna take some heat resistant tape and tape the sides of my design really well. And I might even put a piece of tape on the top just to hold our, um, hold our little insert in place. Then I'll tape down the bottom too. Charlene said, what kind of sublimation paper did you use? Um, today I used a sub paper, Charlene, but really any sublimation paper that you have will work just fine for this. So if you have Starcraft or another brand, pretty much any, any kind of sublimation paper will work. I just grabbed my A sub box first. So that's what I ended up using. I'm gonna put three pieces of tape along the sides of my sock. And then what I do wanna do is I don't want quite this much blue ink to get on the red part of my sock, even though it's gonna wash off. So I do think I'm gonna cut off this blue stripe now that it's taped. So this might be a little tricky to do, but actually, yeah, I'll just bend it backwards like this and then I can trim off that bottom stripe. So we'll be super careful not to cut our sock here. Now we don't have anything to worry about with getting any ink onto the bottom of our sock. So there's one side done. And then I'm gonna repeat it again. And I'm gonna learn from what I just did. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom blue stripe because we know we're not gonna use it anyway. This time before I tape it. So that it's a little bit easier. Maybe I'll hold this like this. So I can kind of make them even. I'm not super concerned about them being perfect, but it would be nice if they coordinated, I think. And we'll make sure that the stars are facing up on our design, like on our sock. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and take this one in place now. room for taping but still put a little tape over the top of our insert there and here soon these socks will be ready to sublimate all right so now our sublimation socks are ready to go so I'll set these aside and we'll work on our infusible ink socks. So let me grab my other um, mat of infusible ink. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off my mat, which will be really easy to do because it's not very sticky. <laughs> And after thinking about it, I think I'm gonna use the dad beard design and the man, the myth, the legend. I think I'm gonna leave off this dad design right here just because it's the most basic. And I think that um, it's gonna be the least memorable. And I got all of these images that I'm using with infusible ink from Cricut Design Space, by the way. So if you're looking for some more images, that's where they came from. Oh my gosh, you guys, I said I was gonna talk about other DIY gift ideas and I haven't talked about a single one yet. So while I'm weeding all of this, we can chat about that. So other than sublimated socks, if you're looking for another DIY gift idea for 
dad or grandpa or your husband or whoever this year. The other ideas that I had for you were, or one of them is etched glasses. So I did a live on this. I was actually just rewatching it earlier today. <laughs> Three years ago, I etched a beer glass for my dad for Father's Day. And so I linked that video in the description below in case you've never etched glass before. Um, but some of the reasons why I really like it is because first of all, it's totally dishwasher safe. And it's just a bit more of a subtle design. So it's not quite as bright and in your face, but I think for a guy that is absolutely perfect. And when I etched this particular design for my dad, I did it using um, the Reds logo because my dad is a big Cincinnati Reds baseball fan. Um, so you could do a favorite sports team. If he's into sports, you could do pretty much whatever you wanted. Um, and that's what makes etching glass really fun. Plus, if you get your blanks from somewhere like Dollar Tree, you can do it super, super inexpensive. So if you're on a budget this year, Dollar Tree is a great place to get your blanks. So that's idea number two. I'm gonna go ahead and set these designs that I'm not using aside because who knows, I might come up with something else to use them for. So like I said, I have video support for you down in the description below in case you guys want to check that out. Now, before I cut these out, when weeding infusible ink, one of my favorite strategies for making it easier is rolling and cracking your infusible ink before you start weeding. You're like, Alex, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> what that means is it kind of means like rolling it back like this and sort of popping up the design like this because I'm mainly gonna be weeding with my fingers, not a weeding tool. So if you kind of roll it and crack it like that, that does make the edges pop up and make it a little bit easier. You just wanna make sure you keep in mind what areas of your design need to stay and what areas of your design need to go. Because the infusible ink is providing the color in our design, we wanna be really careful not to remove things that are supposed to stay. So I'll show you guys what I mean by that here in a minute, just to make sure. There. So that's kind of one sheet, rolled back and cracked. Okay, so that's one sheet kind of finished. I'll repeat that same process here before I start weeding. And you guys can see that that allows a lot of the pieces on the edges to pop up, but especially for these more intricate ones, that makes it a lot easier. And it's also recommended, in case you guys didn't know this, that you don't use a weeding tool with infusible ink. It works a lot better if you just weed with your fingers. So that's why this rolling and cracking method can make it really helpful. I do usually use a weeding tool to get it started and then I tend to do the rest myself with my just my fingers. Because like I've, I've said this before but it's a little bit like weeding cardstock. So it is a little bit of a weird texture but essentially for those of you who are new to infusible ink, um, it's, a, it's basically like a pre-printed sublimation sheet. So it allows you to do sublimation, but you don't have to have a sublimation printer in order to use it. All of it can be cut using your Cricut. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces apart because I do need to remove the background on both of these designs, but I wanna be really careful not to cut anything I don't need to cut here. Okay, so we'll start with this one. And like I said, I'm gonna use a weeding tool to, whoops, get my design started. And then I'm gonna do the rest with my fingers. So I'm just gonna take my weeding tool and start the corner, separating the ink side from the clear sticky carrier sheet. And then from there, I can pull using my fingers. All 
write. And then as we get into these small letters, we wanna be super careful that they stay in place because they are very small for this particular project. So we'll be super careful with how we weed. Okay. So now that we're to these little tiny established letters, I'm gonna be super, super careful. D said, I don't mind weeding infusible ink. You can use most of the positive and the negative too. That's true, that's a really good point. You just wanna go nice and slow. Don't rush it, especially if you have an intricate design. Now, if you were doing like a big t-shirt or something, this would not be an issue at all. The only reason this is difficult is because I am cutting something so little. So like I said, I only made the width of each of my designs three inches. So that's why this is tricky. Oh, darn it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I ripped my three. Okay, we got that piece back and I think I can piece that back together. All right. So I got to put these pieces back a little bit on this first one. Just remove any of these little pieces that we think are going to be tough. And then, oh, where did that two go? <laughs> uh, okay. Usable ink is getting me here. I don't know where my two went. Well, you guys, <laughs> this is not working out very well. So what I might do for the sake of time is I may go ahead and just remove the establish at the bottom in general. Oh, no, I found it, I found it, okay. We can still save it. I'm gonna use my tweezers here and pick up my two from my mat here. Maybe just with my fingers because I don't want to mess up the, the ink. I'm going to carefully stick it back into place like this. I'll show you guys up close here in a moment because I know it's probably a little hard to see. guys I would pick a design that is like really really not so easy to use not at a small size anyway okay so there's the one piece and then the other one okay so we're gonna be super careful with that <laughs> so that I don't have to do that again and then I'm gonna remove the middle part of the zero the other thing that's tricky about infusible ink is if you don't get your weeding tool all the way through, it kind of just pulls apart a little bit like, um, a little bit like almost like cardstock would. So I think that's why they don't recommend you really use a weeding tool much. You just try to use your fingers and just gently pull it apart like that. We want to leave the centers of our letters here because we want that to look all good. And then we have to take the mouth out of the beard here, or the mustache, I guess. And we have our first piece weeded. It looks like this from the back. And it looks like this from the front. So that's what it's going to look like, except it's going to be black onto the sock. Charlene said, I appreciate you keeping it real, LOL. I can relate to some of the jumbles. I am like definitely sweating. <laughs> Delonda said, this is going to be a doozy. And I think that you're right. <laughs> Tracy said, hello, Alex and everyone. Hi, Tracy. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so while I have this design and it's, and it's done and out in the wild, we're going to go ahead and stick it down to one of our socks um, so that I don't lose these pieces. So I'm going to do this one on the blue socks, I think. 
Yeah, I'm going to do this one on the blue socks. So what I'm going to do, and I forgot to do this step in the last one, is lint roll our socks. I wouldn't say it's like a huge deal breaker. I'm not going to remove my sublimation sheet just to um, do that again. But it is helpful, especially if you have white in your design. It is helpful to um, lint roll first. Okay. So we have the sticky carrier sheet that's going to stick this down. And with infusible ink, remember, you always go ink side down onto the sock. But just to keep this in place, I am going to go ahead and use some heat tape on the carrier sheet just to make sure that everything stays in place and we don't end up messing that up, okay? So, <laughs> we got one side of our sock done, so we'll go ahead and try the other side now. Okay, and we're gonna hope and pray <laughs> that this one isn't quite as difficult to do. We're gonna find out. This may end up being a design choice I regret. Good times, you guys. Sometimes we pick the designs that are cute, not always that are gonna make our lives easier. That's all part of crafting though, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go super slow. I'm paying special attention to the numbers at the bottom. Thanks, Tracy. She said it looks awesome so far. I sure hope it stays that way. There, maybe that worked a little better. Now that I've weeded this once, I get a little, try to get a little smarter every time. Oh, nope. Our T is trying to run away. Okay. Oop. There. Ah. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's weed away the rest of the top of this and then maybe we can cut some of it off. So we can just concentrate on the letters at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna cut off all the paper around that so that we can just concentrate on this tricky part here at the bottom. Okay. Let's try going maybe from this direction. Oh, okay. So this time the only letter that got caught up is the T here in establish. So I'm going to gently place that back on my sheet like this. And I do think this is a little bit more tedious. For those of you who are wondering, the difference between infusible ink and sublimation, again, the difference is that you can cut infusible ink with your machine. You don't have to have a sublimation printer. But then you have to endure things like this. Whereas with sublimation, if you print it off, like you saw my stars and stripes, all I basically had to do was tape my design down to it. So there's definitely some pros and cons to both, but I understand if maybe you're not ready to commit to a sublimation printer yet or something along those lines. And fusible ink is a great little gateway craft, if you will, <laughs> into sublimation can kind of get you a feel for it if you're not quite ready to take the jump or you're not sure if you're ready to take the jump. You can get the feel for the process. It's just a little bit more work. But sometimes that work is worth it. Oh, okay, you guys. I want to knock on wood. I don't want to speak too soon, but that was much easier. So I'm much happier. <laughs> So there's it from the front and then, or sorry, from the back, here's what it's gonna look like from the front. So I don't remember if I lint rolled this already, so I'll go ahead and lint roll it again. I'm gonna try to place it in the same place here on the front. Actually, I might bring this over so I can look at it. I left a little bit of distance here at the top just like that. Okay, it looks like we need some more tape too because our uh, carrier sheet is coming up a little. That's exactly why I wanted to tape it so it stays in place. 
So then we have the man, the myth, and the legend design that I need to weed. And then we're ready to press our first set of socks. Yes, Kristen, I agree. The stab and grab tweezers are an essential part <laughs> of weeding infusible ink because it gets those little pieces um, back in place when they are tricky. Okay, so here's our other side of our dad design. We'll set that aside. And for now, we'll concentrate on these two. I'll cut off this little stripe first here at the bottom. And then we're going to cut them apart too. Okay, so in this case, I need to weed away my background as well because I need these little banner pieces to stay in place but we have a lot of letters we need to get around and the little stars. So we definitely wanna be cognizant of that as we are peeling away. So the banner pieces definitely need to stay. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I do designs like this, I am always like, you can't tell obviously on camera, but I am like sweating <laughs> when I do these designs because I'm like, oh, how is this going to work out? When I'm doing it by myself, it's always a lot simpler. But then when I'm doing it for you guys on camera, it seems like I always have a lot more, a lot more issues, honestly, probably just because people are watching, but that's okay. Okay. Our first little star is being a rebel, but we'll gently pull it off there and just kind of set it aside while I work from the other side. <laughs> okay. Try to go down this way a little bit. Ugh kind of shredding on me there. So while I have all this excess paper, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these pieces that I no longer need. I've already gotten rid of them. There is no reason for them to stay. So we are gonna cut them off. Maybe, if it will let it go. All right. So, now I'm gonna work on the intricate parts, which are gonna be the centers of our letters here, as well as our stars. This way it'll allow me to go nice and slow. Oh good, our other stars were much more cooperative. So that's helpful. You can always go back and adjust that last little star there. Okay. So, um, let's work on this bottom part next. So just like anything else, sometimes the key here, even while you're sweating, <laughs> is patience. You don't wanna get super impatient because the moment that you do, I'm pretty sure the infusible ink can sense it because <laughs> that's when things, for, at least for me, always go awry is when I'm starting to get impatient and trying to get in a hurry and then it doesn't go so well for me. Okay. So, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Where's our other star? I had it stuck to the sheet, I thought, but now I lost it. Oh, I found it. Okay. So I'm going to use my tweezers here. Maybe if I can grab it to get our little star back. 
Come on, buddy. There. Now I'll use the tweezers to put it back into place. But you have to be super careful that you don't scratch the ink off with your weeding tools. Okay, so that part wasn't so bad, but now we have to get the centers of these letters that are inside the banner. So, pray for me, y'all. Also, why did I decide to do three pairs of socks? I don't know. I just finally, I got into design space and I finally liked these designs and so I was excited about it. But, that means it made our project pretty long. Okay. So I got the center of my A here and I'm gonna place it. Maybe. Ugh. Okay. It's upside down. Okay, y'all. With love, I may have to skip this third design because this is going to take forever. <laughs> and it's already five o'clock. Kristen said, seeing the struggle is what makes everything more real. I'm glad that you think so. <laughs> That's so funny. Bye, Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so let me, well, uh, I'll just show you what the design looks like. And we may have to just skip this third one just because in the interest of time, I don't want to take forever. But I do think it's a really cool design. It says dad here in the top and then the man, the myth, and then the legend here in the bottom. So these are going to be some really intricate letters and that's going to take forever especially if I have to weed it four times <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just press two pairs of socks and you guys will get the idea uh, because the principle of all of this is all the same so you're not missing out on anything there okay give me just a second I'm going to flip the camera around to my heat press um, I have to scoot it over real quick so give me just a moment here and then I will go over to the heat press and do the pressing Okay, so okay, let me move my light here. All right, my friends, let me, hmm. You know what, I just realized something. Before I send us over there, um, my infusible ink and my sublimation print actually go at different temperatures. So, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and press the sublimation socks first. And then I'll come back and do the other side before I change the temperature on the heat press. And while I'm waiting for the temperature to change on the heat press, I can weed the other design. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'll send us over to my heat press and we'll go ahead and press the first side of our socks. So I already have my um, heat press set up. It is set to 400 degrees for 60 seconds, but I do need to adjust the pressure because the pressure is medium to firm. So that's really light because what I was working on before, I needed really light pressure. So let's try this. Probably one more. Yeah, that feels more like medium to firm to me. Plus, it's going to add some pressure when I actually put the socks into the press. So remember, with sublimation, you always want to have a bunch of paper on hand. So I have several pieces already cut. And I'm going to lay one down on the bottom and one down on the top. Now, the way that I like to do this with my heat press is, of course, we want the ink side to be facing the top, right? Because that's the heating element. And what I like to do is stick it in the sides like this so that I can leave the foot outside the heat press. So I'm going to do one going in this direction and then I'm going to take this one. The foot is going to be sticking out to the right 
and I'm going to do it like this. So again, our goal is always just to preserve the pressure so that it stays as even as possible. So I'm going to put another piece of butcher paper here on top. And then we're going to press for 60 seconds. <laughs> it's a little bit tougher than I thought it would be, but that's fine. We got it. The only thing that's tricky about this is you want to make sure to put the feet in onto the press enough so the bottom of your sock is not sticking out of the press at all. So that's what works best for me. I am using a 15 by 15 heat press. Um, so depending on the size of your heat press, you might have to do your socks in a different configuration. You could have them both sticking out the front if you needed to. Just kind of depends. And I can't see your comments right now, so I hope that you can hear me okay, because my iPad, which is where the sound is coming from, is over on my table. But I'm pretty loud, so I'm pretty confident you guys can hear me. We're close, y'all. 12 seconds. All right. So I always like to use fresh butcher paper. I don't like to use the same butcher paper twice because there's almost always ink blow out on it. So I don't know how well you guys can see that on the camera, but there is quite a bit here. It is vividly um, visible on our butcher paper. So that's why we don't want to reuse it. So these socks are pretty hot, so I'll peel them underneath the camera so you guys can see. But here's what the bottom heat press um, butcher paper looks like. So definitely necessary. So now I'm gonna head back to the other side of my table we're going to peel these and then take the other side. All right, let me check your comments. Hello, hello. <laughs> Charlene said, it's the combination of reasonable talent and the ability to keep going in the face of defeat that leads to success. Amen. I struggled in my math courses. I placed this inside my book cover. That's such a good idea. Hey, Delonda, thanks for still hanging out with us. I'm so glad you were able to stop by. Okay, so now that we've given our socks a little bit of a chance to cool, let's go ahead and peel the first side. It's a little bit tricky to do with all that tape. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how bright and vivid. How cool is that? These look so good. Okay, so that's exciting. So they look so bright and so vivid. I hope this one's just as good. Oh, they look so awesome. Okay. Oh yeah, we gotta pull off the tape on the top too. So that way we can do the other side. And I like that you can really see the distressing in it too. Hang on, let me get it a little closer to the camera here. So you all can see. Oops, I taped the wrong side there. So I really like that you can see the distressing in the blue pattern. It's not like super um, bright, but just right, I think. Okay, so now we're gonna do a method that Dinesh, who owns um, Silky Socks, calls the flip, switch, and roll. And what that means is we're gonna take our pattern, or we're gonna take our socks, we're gonna flip it over, and what we wanna do to have a continuous pattern is we're actually gonna roll the design to the other side. Now in this case, I'm hoping this will help me line it up. I don't know that I'll necessarily get it perfect on the sides, but the rolling your sock over the sides of the insert prevents you from having any like really obvious white lines. So that's kind of the goal here, 
is just to prevent the really obvious white lines. So there's one side, and then see how on the back side we can't see it just yet. All we need to do is just easily roll that over a little bit. And now we can see the pattern on the other side. I know, isn't that so cool? And it's just like so, I don't know, it just it's so easy to do. Um, these have definitely been one of the projects that I was the most surprised by how excited I was to make more. Like when I saw how they turned out, I was like, oh my gosh, I could make socks like all day. <laughs> so that makes it super fun. Okay, so now that we flipped the other side over and rolled over the socks, now we're gonna try to line up the pattern on this side to the best of our ability. We may not get it perfect, but that will keep it from getting, um, you know, from getting too dramatic, from having any white uh, lines. So now that we've kind of learned our lesson, I'm gonna cut the blue stars off the bottom again. And I'm hopeful that if I can line the red line up with the red line where it starts on the other sock, then I should get a really good match. We'll see. These probably would have been good if, um, if I had done the patterns to the side the way that I did on the green socks. That probably would have looked really good. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over like this. And I'm hopeful that this will work. <laughs> What do you guys think? If I place the pattern just like this and I like try to put it in line and then hold it down and tape it, I'm super hopeful that this will make it work. Let's see about that. And you know, in fact, I don't think I've ever done a horizontal pattern on my socks before. I think all of my other patterns have been vertical. So we'll have to see how this comes out. Okay, so I have this one taped. Let's try the same thing on the other sock and then we'll be ready to press the other side already. So once you get that first side ready, it really is way faster to do that second side. Try to get it as straight as we can. And then we'll tape it down. Oh, thanks, Delanda. She said this is gonna be good. <laughs> Kristen said she thinks it'll work perfectly. I hope so, I hope so. I've never tried this before, so this is a little bit new for me in the fact that this is a horizontal pattern. I've never tried to line these up this closely. Because my patterns before were always like kind of all over, so it needed to transfer to the other side, but it didn't have to like be perfect. So we'll see if we can get it to look perfect. Okay, guys, I'm so excited. Let's go back to my heat press and we'll go ahead and press the other side. All righty. So I have my other butcher paper already cut and ready to lay. So lay down this sheet first. Place my um, print with the ink side up and place it on the platen of my heat press. But also we're gonna make sure that heel is nice and tucked. Okay, so there's one side. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm like kind of nervous. <laughs> I want this to work so bad. Okay, and then we got the other side of the sock on there. Okay. Let's cover it with our butcher paper and press. Okay, let's see how we do. Make sure 
sure we got the, ooh, that was my finger. Make sure we got the whole sock in there, the whole white part of the sock, I should say. Because like I said, that's super important. <sighs> I really hope this works, y'all. I'm getting so excited. And then after this, I will go ahead and bump down my heat press a little bit. So um, I think I told you that already, but the socks press at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And then based on what I looked up from the Cricut heat guide for the infusible ink, we want 385 degrees for, I think 45 seconds, is that what I wrote down? Yeah, 40 seconds. So we needed to decrease it overall a little bit. Fifteen more seconds. And that'll give the socks a chance to cool too. And then for our infusible ink, I have some butcher paper that came with it. Um, and then I'm probably gonna have to cut some more as well for that one. Okay. So we'll set these aside and let them cool while I readjust my heat press. I'm just going to drop it, whoops, drop it a few degrees to 385 and then 40 seconds. Okay, so we'll let that be working because after we peel this, our socks will be done. All right, let's go peel these. Okay. Thanks, Irma. I love this tape dispenser. It's the best. Renee said, I ordered a bunch of silky socks, but haven't done anything with them yet. So there you go. This is a perfect project for that. Charlene said, this is inspiring. Can you use an easy press to do these too? Absolutely you can, Charlene. Most definitely. Um, you'll definitely want to pay attention to areas like the heel if you use an easy press. But yeah, you definitely can use an easy press with these. Okay, guys. Are you ready for this big reveal? I'm sweating, but let's try it. <laughs> okay, here's the first one. Ugh, you guys, I can see we didn't get it perfect, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So it looks beautiful, but I can tell that it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's okay. We still have lots of room for improvement, right? So you can kind of see it. Oh, hold on. They fell off the insert a little bit. You can kind of see there that they don't meet. But it's actually really, really close. Let's pull this one off the insert and see what it looks like. So this, the stripes don't meet up absolutely perfectly, but there's no big white gap. And that's exactly what we wanted. So honestly, for my first try on with this style, like I'm pretty pleased with this. How do we do? Yeah, it looks like we had similar results on this one. So not absolutely perfect, but like really, really good still. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm excited. So see, there's our little seam on the side. Not absolutely perfect, but honestly, really, really close. Yay. Okay, so there's our first set of socks. And look how well that red matches. Isn't that awesome? I love how those turned out. Okay. So while we're letting our heat press lower in temperature, let's go ahead and weed the other dad design for the other side of the infusible ink. Even though we have one side ready, We'll go ahead and get the other side ready too. Thanks. I'm glad you guys like it. I'm excited about them. I think they'll still be, still be really, really good. Okay. Oh no. You guys have already lost a three. That's not good. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and give this a try. Yay. I'm glad you all like it. Okay, I'm gonna start up in the same corner, up this way. I'm 
I know my light changed a little bit. I don't have quite as much light on my table as I did before because I had to push one towards my heat press. Uh-oh, guys. This one's going to be hairy. I can feel it. <laughs> All my letters are wanting to come up. Okay. So when I see that happening, I'm going to trim away all of the paper around it so that I'm not pulling off everything. And that way I can just concentrate on this area. And I'll manually go back and add my three in there. Let's go from this side. See if that gives us any better results. Okay, two's in place, zero's in place, and we kept the other two. We're doing good. Okay, a T. Ah, our S fell off and our E wants to fall off. We can replace those, that's easy. Okay, you guys, this one's a little tricky. So I'm gonna use my tweezers here and grab out the E. Okay, now we can place them manually using tweezers. So the S needs to go here. These designs just aren't making it easy, are they? Okay, there's our S in place. We'll take our E and try to put it in place as well. Oh. <laughs> okay guys, I told you this one was gonna be hairy. I could feel it from the second we started. It was just gonna be a little bit of a rebel. But we're gonna get it. Okay, got the E down. Now, before we put the three in place, I'm gonna go ahead and weed the inside of my zero. And I think I'm gonna switch my socks because I didn't even use the socks that have the designs on the side like Kristen suggested. So I'm gonna change these to the green socks. Come on, little three. I'm gonna pick you up with my tweezers. Oh. <laughs> oh, you guys. You ever have a craft that just like kind of, you just feel like it like, I don't know, makes a real crafter out of you? <laughs> You're like, yep, I have some like, like, I am a tougher crafter after this project. Oh, okay. All our little letters are in place. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and peel out the center part. Gently, so we don't mess up the bottom. Okay. <laughs> We got it. Okay. It's looking good. Like I said, I'm sweating like crazy. Oh my gosh. Kristen said gives it that handmade look. That it definitely does. Yeah, they are so fun, Kristen. It's totally worth it. Delonda said I was nervous to try them and felt like I couldn't find the right design. On your socks, Delonda? Yeah, I think that it definitely just depends on like what like kind of what you're looking for and what you want. Um, Cause a lot of different things actually work, but I agree when I first, so I met Dinesh who, like I said, owns silky socks. Um, oh, okay. This is our one with our little broken three. So I'm going to peel this to the green sock and we'll have to fix that little three. Um, but I first met Dinesh last summer at the heat transfer warehouse, Wallapalooza. 
and we talked about working together and I was excited to work together, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this product at first. Like it wasn't super intuitive to me because socks are a little outside of like just kind of my normal comfort zone, I would say. Um, but once I got the product and started playing with them, first of all, the quality is phenomenal. So that makes it more fun. But you just kind of, you know, as you have the blank in front of you, you're able to just get more creative with what you want to do and what you think is going to look good and everything like that. So I was really, I was really encouraged after I played with my first couple of blanks because I realized that it would be a lot more fun than it kind of was in my head at the time, if that makes any sense. Okay, so there's one transferred over to a green sock. We'll transfer this one over and then I think my heat press has probably dropped enough that we should be able to press it now. We'll set this blue sock aside. Hi, dear. I'm still alive. Pressing socks. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. So, place it like that. All right, folks. So, we're super close. I'm going to go ahead and weed my last design. And then we'll press. Okay, go ahead and start in our same corner up like this. Let's start with the bottom and see where we get. Ooh, our E and our S are in place but we won't hold our breath, right? Nope, because our T doesn't want to stay. <laughs> Come on. There we go. All right. Oh, so close, so close. Come on, y'all. Oh. <laughs> My two's hanging on by a thread. But we'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. I'm going to work through the top and then go back down to the bottom. Because again, I just think it's really helpful to not have to deal with a bunch of extra paper in these kinds of situations. I just think it makes it way easier. Maybe that's just me telling myself a little story, but <laughs> I think it helps to cut away the excess so that I don't have to be concerned. All right, y'all. We're super close. Look, super close. Okay. Yeah, you guys are talking about um, pattern paper is the way to go. Yes, exactly, Kristen. That's what. So typically, when I look up patterns for or designs for the socks, I typically will type in um, some search terms, usually into Creative Fabrica, and I'll either use the word um, background or um, paper. Ooh, okay, hold on. All right, we got some little guys to place, but we're going to do it. So I'll look up, like, for example, for this, I think what I searched for was, like, stars and stripes pattern paper at first. And then when I didn't saw, see what I liked, I typed in stars and stripes background, I think. And that's how I ended up, with, like, finding this design. So you just got to play around a little bit, kind of know what you're looking for, and you'll find the right design. Okay. Oh my gosh, y'all, these letters are going wild. Remind me to never do tiny infusible ink letters again. <laughs> Which typically I'm pretty good about stuff like that, like seeing that and being like, nope, don't want to do that. But... Apparently not today, because I did it anyways. Okay. There. Okay. We're working backwards here on the year 2023. Oh. 
this one's definitely going to have that handmade feel because my words or my letters are definitely not going to be straight, but that's going to be all right. <laughs> oh. Okay, press it in. There we go. And then go ahead and pull out the center. We're super close, y'all. Super close. Make sure you stick around to see the final socks because they're going to be super cute. Or I guess I shouldn't say super cute for guys. They're going to be really cool. <laughs> and I think that dads would actually enjoy receiving these. I feel like dads are a little bit tougher to shop for personally, just because they are so functional. They want to use everything. Like Mother's Day, you can get your mom something that she like will like, but that doesn't necessarily like it being a decorative piece is enough of a function for mom that they still like those gifts. Whereas dad has to feel like he ha is able to use it. Otherwise it's kind of useless to him. Okay, we made it y'all. We waited all four. So let's hop back over to the heat press and we will go ahead and press this guy. Kristen said, sublimating socks is a whole lot easier than knitting some. I am sure Kristen, I'm not a knitter, but I can definitely see that. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the paper that um, came in my Cricut Infusible Ink. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to cut each of these sheets in half because I only need to cover the area where I actually have ink. So I don't need to cover the entire sock and use quite as much. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do this, but. I'm gonna go like that. And then I can kind of fold my butcher paper over top the sock like that so that the bottom and the top are covered without having to use a bajillion sheets of bush paper. Okay. So I'll go ahead and stick this one in the press again with the ink side up, but covered with butcher paper. And I think I'm still going to put my, I'm still going to stick my um, feet off of the press even though they're turned sideways because I don't want to mess up the pressure. So I think that's what's gonna work best. Okay. Okay, we're gonna press these for 40 seconds and see how they do. Now the only challenge would be these um, infusible ink sheets, the transfer sheets for the way that I put it in the Cricut heat guide, it did call for firm pressure. So that would be a little tricky to get with your um, Cricut easy press, but it can still be done. So just keep that in mind. You want to pay attention to what the requirements are because you want the best press possible, right? So you want to try to pay attention to those requirements. And that's partially why I chose to use my heat press today because I could see that the pressure, the time was longer and the pressure was higher. So I thought a, a heat press would be a little bit easier. Okay, three seconds. Whew, okay, let's go see how these turn out. I can switch out my butcher paper here when I get back. All right, let's go see. All right. So, go ahead and pull this off. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are gonna be so cute. Hold on. Oh my gosh, y'all, how cute. I love that. I think that's gonna, ah, uh, that's so cute. And now we just have our second side, which is gonna make this really, really easy. These first ones turned out so good. 
Take a look at that. I love it. So cute. Okay, and now we'll do the other side the exact same way. So we'll just stick on the dad here like this. Good, I'm so glad that you are excited about this craft and you love it as much as I do. D said, Alex, we know you're doing well. How is the daddy to be doing? He is doing great. He is doing such a good job at trying to get our house ready. We're still working on that bathroom renovation, but he is absolutely killing it. He definitely was not enthused to go to the hospital with me yesterday morning. He was very nervous about that, but he actually did really, really great. So thanks for asking, D. He's awesome. I feel like everyone's probably biased on that, as you should be, but my husband rocks. He's the bomb. And I wish I could tell you guys what I got him for his first Father's Day, because I think it's a really good idea, but obviously I don't want to spoil the surprise. So I didn't post what I got for my husband, but I'm really excited to give him his gift this June for Father's Day. I'm pumped. Thanks guys, I'm glad you like it. Okay, so now we're all done. We just need to do the other side and then we're finished. I said we're all done. We're not all done, but we're close. <laughs> we just need to press this other side. Yay, okay. So we'll cut our piece of butcher paper in half again. Thanks for bearing with me, y'all. This ended up being a really, really long process. <laughs> and I wasn't really expecting that. Or I wasn't really, I just say I wasn't really thinking through that. Because um, I do like making socks, but at least for me, I found that I just not very fast. And that could be because I don't make a ton of socks. So maybe if I made them more often, I'd be a little quicker about it. Um, but I do find that it just takes time, you know? Mess that one up. I have to go back and fix it. Here we go. Got it on that side. Well, we're just a hot mess over here. <laughs> All right. Stick this one on the press. This one's ready to go. So we'll do our final press here and see how we turn out. Oh, you guys, we're so close. So, so, so close. Um, but yeah, my biggest resource for design ideas has been Creative Fabrica. I found that they have so many digital backgrounds and digital papers that works really, really great for socks. Um, if you go back, I have a couple tutorials on socks on my channel that I've made for Silky Socks. And I think every time, except for these infusible ink designs, I have used patterns that came from Creative Fabrica every single time. So I definitely recommend checking that out if that's what you guys want to do with your socks, whether you're ordering some to make some now, or if you already have some and you need some inspo. That's where I would go to find them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch my heat press off because we're finished with it now. And I'll pull off the butcher paper, kind of stick it here in my pile. Since we're all finished, let's go check out this reveal. And I'm going to switch the light around so you guys can see again. So I know it gets a little dark without those lights. Okay. <laughs> I know, I need to get started on dinner too because baby is definitely getting hungry. Oh, thanks, Kristen. I'm glad you like the tile. My sweet husband worked so hard on that. So, so, so hard. And we really do have a lot done. We're just kind of down to the little stuff now, which is nice. Okay, ready? Let's check this out. <gasps> you guys, it looks so good. 
I'm so pumped. Look how like nice and crispy that looks. Oh, it turned out so good. Don't you just love when your crafts turn out like even better than you thought they would? That is like the best feeling ever. How fun is that? And I really, really like these. I think I already said this, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I found some of my favorite like Father's Day designs actually in Cricut Design Space. Because like I said, I went to Creative Fabrica and I was just not impressed by a lot of like the Father's Day specific designs. There were a few that I liked, but I just didn't, I just wasn't really a big fan. So for designs that are simpler like this, I found the best ones in Cricut Design Space. But per usual, the pattern papers and digital papers, definitely Creative Fabrica is my go-to for that. So here's what the final reveal of all of our socks looked like. So the green ones, we have the pattern here on the side versus the red ones, we have the pattern kind of front to back. Now granted, you can't tell that because it's pretty continuous, but I think it's a cool approach two different styles of socks. And I didn't link the other ones in the description, but if you want to see the other things I or the other socks that I've made, feel free to go to my channel and just search like DIY Alex sublimation socks or something like that. And you'll find several other tutorials on different ways that I've made these. If you need some more ideas and inspiration, you're so welcome. Oh my gosh, you guys, did I even talk about the other... I didn't even talk about the other gift ideas. So while we're looking at this, let me do that and then I will jump off of here. So we talked about etching glass already as idea. So idea number one, of course, would be socks, right? Um, that's pretty obvious. Idea number two would be an etched glass, which we already discussed. And then idea number three is just a DIY ball cap of some kind. As you can see, I made this one using heat transfer vinyl, and this is a Cricut hat sublimation blank. So you could do sublimation here, you could use infusible ink, or you could use HTV, totally up to you. I have a video linked in the description on how to do that down in the description if you need some support. And then my final idea, I don't have an example of, um, but customized tools. So for example, people will take a tape measure and in the circular label on the side, they'll either make a sticker for it or you can actually create or like cut out a thin piece of wood or maybe chipboard and actually put that in the side of a tape measure. So I've, I've made that for Andrew before and I can't find it, but it's a really, really cute idea. Um, or you can also take a hammer and you can put vinyl down the side of the hammer or you can... Um, even wood burn, if you like really want to feel ambitious, you could try wood burning down the side of your hammer too. So those are my other DIY gift ideas for you that I think dads will actually want and will actually use. Um, but I so appreciate you guys hanging out with me for such a long live today. I had the best time hanging out with you. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe to DIY Alex and make sure you give a big thumbs up if you learned something new in this video. I love you guys so, so much. 